Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to God's house. May the Lord richly bless us as we worship together and as we hear his word and are assured of the forgiveness of our sins. Um, God's blessings to everyone who's here today. We welcome you in the Lord's name. And also a reminder to sign the record of fellowship and hand that to your neighbor uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, This morning as we uh, gather together, let's take a moment to turn to those around and greet each other in the Lord's name. Connor, God's blessings to you. We take, we turn to the opening hymn, number 861, Christ Be My Leader. We'll stand as we sing the last stanza of the hymn. We turn to page one in our worship folder. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us 
make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, now let us worship Him. Please take your seats. The Old Testament reading for today, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, is from the a book of Ecclesiastes uh, from chapters 1 and 2. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with, I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool? Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity." So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun For all his days are full of sorrow, and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting, only to give to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from the third chapter of the letter to the Colossians. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. 
On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. O Lord, have mercy on us. In honor of Jesus, we stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build big, larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is, so is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And the place where your glory dwells. Please be seated. We invite the children to come up to the front for a children's message at this time. You guys can come over here if you want. All the way to the middle. Okay, that'll work. That way I can see you guys better and you can see me better. Let's say a quick prayer as we get started. Will you repeat after me? Dear God, please be with us as we learn about you. Amen. Well, looking at this crew, I have some questions for you that I think I probably already know the answers to. But have you had a good summer? What are some good things that you have done this summer? Swimming at Oasis. Seeing lots of family. What about you, Hannah? Did you like your trip to Minnesota or Wisconsin? Yeah. When you went and did all those fun things, what were some of the best parts? Playing with cousins. You forgot? Okay. Ooh, 
oh, okay, going to the water park and swimming on all the rides and going on all the slides and watching your dad scream as he went down the slides. Was that pretty fun? Yeah. Well, I cannot believe, do you guys know what tomorrow is? August 1st. Tomorrow is already August 1st. And when we think about August coming, you know what else is coming soon? School. Summer is almost over, and I cannot believe how fast it has gone. And I especially can't believe how fast July has gone. I feel like I've hardly been around because I had my youth trip and then some time off with family. And then I was in Muddy Cluster last week. But a lot of good things have happened this summer. And one of the really good things that happened this summer was our youth trip that I took with our high schoolers to Houston. I want to show you guys some things. Thinking about your summers and thinking about my summer, some of the good things that we got to do in Houston, we got to have snacks and meals together. You guys like high chews? Me too. So do the high schoolers. So they were really excited when I was carrying these around and I would give them high chews and we would have some fun at our youth gathering. We played games together, which was a lot of fun. We got to go, oh, we made a special t-shirt that we wore on the gathering. And it says, get found. And it reminds us about Jesus. And on the back, because so many of our group were named Josh, one of them is here this morning, we decided to immortalize all of the Joshes on the back of our shirt. So we can always remember that three out of the 12 high schoolers that went were named Josh. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, one of the most important things we did, we studied God's Word together. We went to different sessions and heard about all the good things that God has done for us. There were a lot of good things that happened while we were in Houston. But you know what? There were some not-so-good things that happened, too. Has anything not-so-good happened to you this summer? Has anybody gotten any bumps or bruises or scrapes? Maybe you fell off your bike or you slipped and fell running or you bumped your knee on the bottom of the pool. Does that make summer very fun? And you get those little bumps and bruises. Has anybody here not gotten along with a brother and sister all the time? Or maybe had trouble listening to moms and dads about things? Or maybe there have been days this summer where you have felt bored. Have you felt bored any days this summer? Well, there were some not so good things that happened on our trip too. We had some bumps and bruises and some people with headaches and tummy aches and all kinds of things. And so we had to have a first aid kit. We had some things that got lost and ended up in lost and found, or some things that got lost and we never found. We, let's see, we had to think about how heavy our bags were gonna be because we flew to Houston and we had to be careful that they weren't too heavy. We had some things that broke and we had to fix them a lot of the times. Well, actually this time we didn't have any backpacks break but usually on the youth gathering, backpacks break and you have to fix them. But probably the hardest thing that happened is on our way home, our plane got delayed overnight and we had to stay in the airport. And there are a couple of high schoolers here that could tell you all about staying overnight in an airport and trying to sleep on the floor or find chairs or whatever you could do and the airline gave us this little thing that had a toothbrush and toothpaste and face wash and chapstick and all kinds of stuff to take care of us because we weren't expecting to stay overnight. And it was no fun. It was kind of hard and kind of rough. Was Jesus with us through all of those things? The good and the bad? He was? 
Of course he was. I want somebody, let's see. Can somebody read what it says right here? Anna? In all things. That was our theme for the youth gathering this summer. In all things. And that theme was taken from the same book as our epistle reading, from the book of Colossians. Because in Colossians, Paul is trying to encourage the church at Colossae who wasn't getting along. They were having lots of arguments about who was the better follower of Jesus. Who was doing it better? Was it the Greek Christians or the Jewish Christians? Was it these people or those people? Who was doing it better? And each side thought they were doing it better. But at the end of our epistle reading, Paul says, Christ is all and in all. And at the beginning of Colossians, he emphasizes that by saying that Christ is in all things because he made all things and he saved all things and he does all things and he is with us in all things. So even when we got stuck in an airport overnight and it was rough and we were grumpy and we were tired and we didn't get any sleep and it made us feel not so good, we can be reminded that Christ is with us in all things. Christ was with us then. Because you know what? The next morning we got up and we got on a plane at 6 o'clock and we had two pilots that got a full night's sleep and were ready to bring us safely home. The night before, they didn't have any pilots that had enough rest. We know that Christ is in all things, working through us and working for us so that we can share him in all of the things that we do, in the good times and in the bad. Christ is with us in all things. That is good news that we get to be thankful for and that we can pray about. So let's pray about it. Dear God, thank you for the reminder in your word that you are with us in all things. Help us to focus on you and the good and the bad and to share you, especially as we look ahead to the school year. As we spend these last few weeks together as families, help us to share you in all things in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, while the congregation starts singing our next hymn, do you guys want to grab a haichu and take it back with you? You need to ask your moms and dads if it's okay to eat it and make sure you take care of your garbage. And I suppose you could take some for your older siblings because I know there's a lot of those sitting around. We're going to sing our next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's meditation is the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 12. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a winning ticket has been identified. It was sold somewhere in Illinois, if I remember right, and seeing some of your smirks, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The, the owner of that ticket has just won $1.337 billion with the Mega Millions jackpot. That's $1,337,000,000. It's a lot of money. And their life is forever changed, but not in always in a good way. With all the hype with that mega millions dollar jackpot ticket, I saw an article this week that talked about some winners whose lives were changed in not good ways by the large sums of money. Uh, one person won a whole bunch of, won millions of dollars, and he got caught up in gambling and drinking. And his wife left him. Several family members died tragically. He was robbed several times. Each time he lost more than $100,000. And he died broke and alone. Another winner won $27 million and went on a huge spending spree. And in five years, he was broke. And his family had left him, and he was homeless. And seven years later, he died alone in a hospice care facility before the age of 59. Another winner had a scratch-off and won a million dollars. A month later, he was poisoned and died. They investigated but couldn't find anyone at fault. Lives are forever changed and not in good ways by gaining a lot of wealth. And maybe those winners should have listened to the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 12, and, and maybe they should have heeded the warning that Jesus gives in our text today that the abundance of possessions in this world are not good things. And maybe if they would have only listened to these words of Jesus, their lives could have been been different or ended well or not in tragedy. Uh, sometimes it's easy for us to take a text like this and point out how other people should, should listen to these words of Jesus and the abundance of possessions that they have acquired, and it's easy for us to say they should take these words to heart. These words of Jesus are not just for other people. These are words for you and me. These are words that you and I need to take to heart. There are questions in this text and these words of Jesus that we need to answer every day. And we need to think about in the choices that we make in life every day. The words of Jesus we need to take to heart today. What are those words? Let's take a look. Here in Luke chapter 12, Jesus is traveling with his disciples. There's a whole crowd of people going with him. They're making their way. Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem, and as he is going, he is he is doing some teaching. In fact, that teaching begins at the end of Luke chapter 10, and he teaches about all sorts of things, and we get to Luke chapter 12. In the midst of the teaching, Luke tells us that, that someone in the crowd cried out, interrupts Jesus' teaching is what is implied, and he says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. 
We could hear that, that complaint today. People not happy with how the inheritance has been divided and someone getting more than their fair share. And we hear Jesus respond, man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? Kind of sounds like strange words for Jesus to say. And yet those words are a direct quote from Exodus chapter 2, verse 14, where Moses in Egypt, when he's living in Pharaoh's kingdom, sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, an Israelite. And Moses goes out, he strikes the Egyptian, kills him, buries him in the sand, thinks nobody's looking, and the next day two Hebrews, two Israelites are fighting. And Moses says, why are you hitting him? And, and the Israelite says, man, who made you a judge or arbitrator over me? Are you going to strike me and bury me like you did the Egyptian? And Moses is afraid, and he flees to Midian. He marries Jethro's daughter and tends the flocks of his father-in-law, Jethro, where he has the burning bush. And later, Moses speaks in Deuteronomy chapter 18 as he's saying his farewell address to Israel. And he says, God will send you a prophet like me, but only greater. And Jesus here in saying, man, who made you, me a judge or arbitrator over you is fulfilling Deuteronomy 18, that he is the prophet like Moses, but only greater. And he gives a teaching. He gives a warning. Take care, Jesus says. Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Take care, Jesus says, and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Which really begs the question. If our life is not to be about the abundance of possessions, what does your life consist of? You know, one of the saddest things to do in life sometimes is to go to an estate auction or an estate sale. I'm sure you've walked around in those. I know I have. And, and what's depressing about that is sometimes you can see the story of somebody's life and, and you can see the abundance of their possessions. And after the will and and all the inheritance has been distributed, there's still the stuff to deal with. And what do you do with the stuff? Have an auction or maybe an estate sale. And sometimes the saddest thing to see at an estate sale is the abundance of somebody's possessions, and it's all good, gently used maybe even brand new. The china dishes don't have a scratch or chip. The furniture has hardly been touched. What's better? To see the china dishes with scratches and chips and the fork missing. It's been used. It's been enjoyed. To have furniture and things that are worn out and no good to be used and enjoyed for the purpose in which they are designed. They're not to be hoarded and displayed. Sometimes at those estate sales, you see what's important in somebody's life and what they invested, and now it's being sold for pennies on the dollar. Take care, Jesus says and be on guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. What does your life consist of? We don't think we have an issue 
with Jesus' words, take account of what your mind thinks and what your heart feels. When you go to the store in the midst of all of the distribution issues we are faced with, the challenges of getting product, and that name brand product is not there on the shelf, and how do you respond? And what does your heart feel? Take care, Jesus says, and be on guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Jesus then gives a parable and he talks about, about a rich man. Jesus says, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. Did you hear the order of those words? The land of a rich man produced plentifully. Jesus is saying, this rich man who we hear later in the parable saying, look at all I have accomplished. Jesus says the land produced plentifully. He is saying all of the gifts we have in this earth are a gift from God. The ground produced it. No man has power over the ground and how it produces, and it produced plentifully. And yet this rich man says, look what I have done. Look how much stuff I have. What shall I do, soul? I know. I'll tear down my barns. I'll build bigger ones, and I will be set for life. I can relax. I can drink. I can be merry. So Jesus brings that line when he says, God says, you fool. This night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared. Whose will they be? In those times of life when we want to be honest with ourselves, we're going to have to answer that question one day. The things you have prepared. Whose will they be? The things of this earth have no place in heaven, and we cannot take them with us after we die. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? Who will you give it to? It's not an easy question, is it? It's answered in our Old Testament reading from Ecclesiastes. King Solomon, in his wisdom, wrote that book that book, and, and he speaks the words in verse 18. He says it this way. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. The things you have prepared, whose will they be? Will they be given to somebody who is wise? Who is foolish? We will never know. And yet that question is one we wrestle with in the possessions that God has given to us in this body and life. This question is a question that all of God's children must consider one day. A question that his son, his only son, his beloved son, had to answer. Jesus. The things you have prepared, whose will they be? Jesus was a man who did not have an abundance of earthly possessions. We hear Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 8. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. 
He didn't have his own home. He didn't have a bed or a pillow. He didn't have an abundance of earthly possessions. And yet the things that Jesus had prepared, what things had Jesus prepared? He prepared good things, great things, perfect things. He had prepared favor in God's sight by following his word. He had come in the image of God and kept it every day of his life. He had prepared righteousness, God's holiness, in how he lived and what he did. He had brought great things and he prepared great and perfect things, God's righteousness and perfection, God's goodness and favor. And he went to the cross and he suffered and he died for you. For all those times when our lives get caught up in the abundance of possessions and things of this world. For all those times when our heart desires the things in this world. And we set our mind on the things of this world and we get caught up in all the wealth of this world. Jesus took those sinful desires to the cross. And the things he had prepared, whose will they be? Those things of God's favor and perfection. God's righteousness, His holiness, they are yours, given to you by Christ. In His death that took away all of your sins, He has left you the inheritance of an abundant grace, an abundant forgiveness, an abundant love, and the presence of Him in your life. Our life does not consist in the abundance of possessions, but in the abundance of the things of God, His righteousness and His grace and His mercy and His love and His forgiveness and His life given to you through His Son, Jesus, so that we we may live in the riches that God has given to us. What does that look like? It's what our epistle reading is about in Colossians chapter 3. Paul speaks about it very clearly. He says, our lives are hidden in Christ. Our sinful life has been buried in Christ, and we have been risen a new person in Christ baptized in Jesus' death and resurrection so that we don't need to walk in the ways of this world, but in the ways of Christ. Paul says it this way in verse 5 in Colossians chapter 3. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry, evil desire, covetousness. Sounds a lot like Jesus' words in Luke chapter 12. And yet being a baptized child of God that you are, risen in Christ and given His grace and His strength, we are able to fight against those evil desires. And though we will fail, Jesus reminds us and assures us that our life consists more than the abundance of the possessions in this world. He has given us more wealth than a $1.337 billion lottery ticket. He has given us wealth beyond measure. It's what he says at the end of this text in Luke chapter 12. 
When he says, as so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God, it, it kind of sounds like being rich toward God is us moving towards God, but rather that word toward can be translated toward or into or in. You are rich in God because of Jesus. You are rich in God's grace and his love and his forgiveness. It is more wealth than any lottery ticket in this world where you have a home in God's kingdom. Roads paved with gold, go gates with pearls in the presence of God where you will not suffer or hurt or cry you'll be in the presence of God. You will have joy for eternity. You will be blessed beyond measure forever because of Jesus' gifts to you. Indeed, what does our life consist of in this world? We need things to use for life, but our life does not consist of the abundance of possessions. Our life consists of the things of God and the riches of Jesus given to you by his death and resurrection, that you, that you may know you have favor in God's sight because of Jesus that you may know you are forgiven because of Jesus, that you are righteous and holy before God because of Jesus. Jesus has made you rich in God. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith into life everlasting. Amen. And let us confess our faith as we turn to page five in our worship folder and we sing the canticle, the Te Deum. Let us stand as we sing.
We now worship our Lord with our offerings. Please be seated. We sing him 704. Please stand, we turn to page seven and we continue with the Kyrie. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we also include uh, Casey Tippy, the, the niece of Chris Kazarian, who was just diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. We turn to the Lord in prayer. All is vanity, O Lord, without the grace and guidance of your word and spirit. Guard our hearts against pride and arrogance, and a life rich in things but poor in spirit. Grant to us wise hearts that we may love rightly all that you have made, 
and use them all for your purpose and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard your church, O Lord, the people of your own possession, and give to her honorable and noble men for the office of the holy ministry. Call them into service, that they may serve with faith and with devotion. We also pray, Lord, that you would call others into the work of the church, as you call teachers and deaconesses and all other missionaries and so forth, to proclaim your word and we pray that you would make us rich in the treasures of your grace that will never disappoint us, that we may give generously toward those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that in our lives together we might show the love of Christ to one another. Give all husbands and wives fidelity to their vows and promises. Help all parents teach their children to know and love the Lord. Guide all single adults that they might find fulfillment in their service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, kingdoms rise and fall, and leaders are raised up and brought low by your will. Grant our nation and its leaders humility before you that we might recognize the vanity of all our plans and so be ready to rejoice and give thanks for your every good gift in the days that you give us under the sun. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be near those who suffer, those who are dealing with health problems, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Sustain them in the truth that their lives are even now hidden with Christ in God and that when he appears, they will also appear with him in glory. And Lord, we hold up before you Sharla, Ken, Tim, Katie, Catalea, Sue, Janet, Jim, Brittany, Beverly, Peter, Keith, Linda, Sonia, Stephen, Dee, Don, Tammy, Don, Gary, JC, John, Kinsley, Lael, Fabiano, Sue, Don, Joan, Casey, and those that we name in our hearts before you. We also pray your comfort and blessing to the family and friends of uh, Teresa Putman, of Renee Kircher, of Sylvia Hafner. As they mourn their loss, comfort them with the truth and the assurance of a resurrection to eternal life through Christ our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunities that you give us to serve, and we praise you for the opportunities this last week for members of our congregation to conduct a vacation Bible school at Muddy Cluster for the children and family there. Thank you for the opportunities to work on the Youth Lodge. We pray that you would continue to bless this community with your truth of your word and the assurance of your love in the gospel of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we also pray for the Gideon International Program, the, ser the service program that seeks to bring your word to people of all nations. Bless their efforts to provide Bibles throughout the world, and thank you for the opportunities that you open up for them and the work that is done. We also thank you that your word will not return to you void, but will accomplish according to what you please. And we pray this, Lord, in the strong and saving name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, but neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. We turn to our sending hymn number 761. Please take your seats. Uh, we're going to take a few moments um, at this time to hear a presentation about the Gideons International from John Bull. So it's the microphones turned on for you, John. Thank you. Montana District President Terry Forkey concluded his report at the district convention recently held by those words that we just heard about from Isaiah 55, 10, and 11. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, make it to bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth that shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God's word is that seed. But how can I and you help plant that seed? What is happening to that word in the crisis in the Ukraine and the millions of desperate people? children who won't remember their father's faces, thousands of people feeling hopeless and afraid. Psalm 31 sounds like it could have been written in a key in 2022. Verse 21 says, I praise to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was a city under siege. 
As people grapple with the unknown, many are experiencing the Bible's message for the first time ever. People were flocking to the Bible Society store in Keith, but demand was so high, they soon ran out. One of the biggest challenges, we need more Bibles. What then can we do to help? There are 2,000 Gideons in the Ukraine, partnering with our brothers and sisters in Christ and searching, who are searching for help. We need to see, help them see through God's word that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Pray for their souls and their lives, folks. It was also reported at the district convention that members of our LCM congregations have given over $2 million for relief in the Ukraine. Gideon's also quickly provided 100,000 Bibles when that war broke out to the refugees that have fled to Poland and Romania and were able to get another 300,000 scriptures into Kiev. The Gospel for, John, for June 19th from Luke chapter 8 where Jesus healed the demon-possessing man who then begged Jesus that he might stay with him and the disciples. But Jesus told him, quote, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And the demon-possessed man, who had been demon, went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Gideons are giving God's word out very close to home as well. At Will James Middle School, just a block from Trinity, I stood there with a case of 100 New Testaments right across from the busiest corner where the kids leave the school. Across to me in another corner, there was a sign saying, free student Bibles and a half a case there waiting for another Gideon to show up. God blessed me within 15 minutes that all 100 of those testaments had been joyfully received by those middle schoolers. But I noticed that there was no Gideon across that street and the case of Bibles was gone. And I looked over and I saw a large coach bus where all these kids were clustered around. I walked over there and they were joyfully talking about how blessed they were to get God's word. God was working, even though there wasn't a kid in there to help them. On June 2nd, Trinity Lutheran School presented their Christian Spring Musical. Principal Thomas suggested the best option to make God's word available to the hundreds of people attending that musical would to be step, have a table set right outside the exit door. Ruth Koshy, uh, getting an auxiliary member was faithfully and helpfully giving the scriptures out to the students. And I was focusing on giving out the large print testaments to the adults for those mature eyes. However, there was a young girl that kept coming back and asking me for those large print testaments. And finally she told me why. She says, my grandpa, my grandma and my mom don't know Jesus. I need those for them. And with tears in my eyes, I was more than happy to give them, regretting my reluctance. Acts chapter 2 lists 17 different people groups on that first Pentecost, where Peter says in verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And 3,000 believed and were baptized that day. In your Gideon bullet this morning, I stuck in a little Bible app. I'd ask you to take them out whether you donate or not, and there is an offering plate in the back, or if you mail these in. But this little app, you can download on your phone and listen and read God's word daily, and then give it to someone else as well. There is over 1,800 languages that will be there on your phone for you to use. What a gift. But we have gifts for you, those uh, Gospel of John's and Romans, Mark Testaments are back there. We have small print and large print and more of these apps for you. So, and also some memory uh, memorial cards and other Gideon cards put here. And we have a new box right as you cross from the office as you leave uh, out that door. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, fellow members, for your prayers, your financial support, and for using and sharing that little app. To God be all the glory. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching today. I'm Pastor Dan Rindernecht. And I'm Pastor Dan Kiner. We pray that these worship services have been a blessing for you. We're uh, glad to be of service and to have this opportunity to reach out to our community. We also would love to meet you as well, and so we would like to invite you to come to our church and participate in, uh, it, with us in worship and Bible study. You know, there's many scripture passages that talk about being together as God's people, and Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, he is present. And we invite you to be with us in Bible study and fellowship times. You can see those on our website at Trinity Billings. Dot org, But also join us for worship. We have worship on Saturday evening at 5 o'clock and on Sunday morning at 8 and 10.30 with Bible study at 9.30 in between. We'd love to have you join us together as the family of God here at Trinity Lutheran Church. If there's any way that we can help you or meet any needs that you have, please call us at 406-245-3984 and God's blessings on your day.